Glory to God. Okay, James chapter 1, verse 2. He says, my brethren, how many of you are a brethren? Okay. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Amplified says it like this, uh, temptations, testings, and trials. So it amplifies it a bit. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire. The word perfect also is translated and can be translated mature or complete. Let patience have her complete work, that you may be mature and entire, wanting nothing. Hallelujah. God is good. So enduring, is, uh, that word patience is also translated endure or endurance, okay? It happens to be a Greek word that means to abide under, okay? Uh, there's a, a little uh, characteristic about it is joyfully abide under, which that's the reason why he says count it all joy, when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience or puts patience to work. Okay, so abiding under does not mean abiding under the circumstances. Okay, it's abiding under. In fact, let's read it. Go with me, if you would, over to Psalm 91. It's abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah, if you're abiding under... I mean, that, that just sounds like suffering and punishment to uh, abide under circumstances joyfully. Okay? Uh, some people like that, but that's not what the Bible is teaching here. Okay, so I'm going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Look at Psalm 91, verse 1. He says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's a protected place. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. So you're covered. My fortress, that's a resort in time of trouble. My God, in Him will I trust. Okay, so that, that actually is what James is talking about. Uh, verse 3, surely he shall deliver you. See, if you abide under, he will deliver you. And then he begins a long list of things, uh, snare the fowler, noise and pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Yes. Wor your, the word will actually defend you Amen. and ward off attacks. So when James is talking about abiding under, he's talking about abiding under the shadow of the Almighty in a protected place. It is actually a fortress. Praise the Lord. And uh, doing that, you should do that joyfully because the outcome is certain as long as you abide under. Now, so if you're going through uh, a tough time, and let's just, let's talk about this for a minute. Um, Christians go through tough times. Okay, uh, it can be an attack of sickness or disease. It can be uh, family problems. It can be uh, someone ac accusing you falsely or even accusing you rightly bringing trouble into your life. So uh, often when trouble comes, whatever you know, brings the trouble, uh, when trouble comes, it, it's not just a one-day thing. Amen. You know, it, it uh, has a tendency to stick around longer than you like. Amen. And it wears you down. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what God says is, okay, what I, I want to teach you how to endure these things. Okay, attacks so that you actually make it. How many of you realize it's the will of God for you to make it? Amen. Amen. You know, there's this uh, in you, there is this fight back syndrome scenario, which is vital. What that means is that you're willing to live. 
So, and then, you know, in that particular situation, it's not just live anyway. It's live with a full life because that's what we're promised. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. So it's not like being spoiled or anything like that, but the expectation is joy and hope and a good outcome. Hallelujah. And in actuality, trouble is an interruption to an already existing state of peace and wellness for a believer. See, the, the state that we're in is a settled state of peace and wellness. And then the trouble comes and, and uh, wants to push you out of your state of rest, it's called. You're resting in faith. Hallelujah. Waiting for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Somebody out there ought to go ahead and say amen. Okay, so enduring or having patience doesn't have anything to do with suffering. It's actually just the opposite. Because if you, if you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, you're not going to suffer. Now, uh, you know, it's just like coming in out of a storm. You know, you wait until the storm is over. That's why you came into the protected place. Okay, so what we're going to talk about here tonight is how to stay there. Now, here, I heard this years ago. It's, it's helpful. You know, the devil is the one who attacks. Okay? And uh, he is incapable of sustaining an attack long enough to defeat you. Because remember, he doesn't have any power. And whatever it was that brought this on, he will eventually run out of fiery darts. It says, quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Okay, so he will eventually run out and the storm will eventually pass. And God's plan is for your victory to continue. So it's not unlike natural storms. You know, they come, they blow, it's hard, it tears things up, uh, can be fearful, praise the Lord. But if you stay in a protected place, then the storm passes, hallelujah, and then you resume. You go back outside and you go, wow, hallelujah, God is good. So now we're going to get a new yard. <laughs> praise God. Okay, so i uh, got three tips here that will help you to endure, okay? Uh, so, uh, number one, don't side with the trouble. Okay, don't make friends with the trouble. Uh, go, if you would, over to 1 Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. This takes some getting used to. Uh, the carnal mind is is by nature negative. So this is a learned behavior. Hallelujah. How to stay positive in the middle of a bad situation is not something that is naturally inherent with people. So this is supernatural. Okay? But what we're going to do is we're not going to side with the trouble. We're not going to allow ourselves to begin to think uh, bad, the wrong thing. We're not going to get negative about this. Okay, so if you would look at verse 7, Peter says that the trial of your faith, being more precious than the gold that perishes, is not the trial that's precious, it's the faith that's precious. Okay, make sure that you get that right. See, when your head is negative, you have a way you can read negative into just about anything. So just like that verse, I mean, you could take that backwards if you didn't read the whole verse and understand what he was saying. That the trial of your faith, which is more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire might be found unto the praise and honor and glory 
at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so your faith is precious. Now, to make sure, and uh, James said, the trying of your faith works patience. Okay, so here, here's a, a wake-up call. Okay? Faith is not tried unless you have faith. It's not a trial of faith if there's no faith. <laughs> I mean, that, that makes just simple sense, doesn't it? Yeah, but you know, a lot of times when people are attacked by things, it's not about their faith, it's about something else. So your faith is, is the, uh, the what, what this is about, okay? Now, what we're going to address is if you don't have faith, that needs to be fixed in order for it to be a trial of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, uh, how would a trial of faith work? Okay. Well, here's an example. Jesus in his earthly ministry, he would tell his disciples, uh, like on one side of the Sea of Galilee, uh, meet me over on the other side or go over to the other side of the lake. Okay, so if they started out on his word, then they were in faith acting on what he said. Now, the storm that came to them in the middle of the sea was the trial of their faith. It was an actual trial of faith because they were in faith doing what he instructed them to do. So, you know, no believer actually should be in a condition where your faith is not working. Because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Okay, so uh, if a believer is living in, in the word, their faith should be working constantly Amen. on whatever needs to be worked on. So for, for instance, you don't go to work out of faith. You should be acting on the word by faith somewhere when you go to work. Boy, it's dang, it would be dangerous in today's world Amen. to go and do anything that you're not doing by faith. Amen. How many of you are following this? Okay, so that's the nature of living by faith. Okay, then so the word gives us uh, principles, Bible principles, the word to act on for family. Okay, so a trial of faith in the area of family would be the enemy bringing something against your faith relative to your family. Now, if you're just living, you know, your family life by worldly principles, there's no faith working. So you have trouble. It's just the devil, you know, stirring things up, which happens. How many of you are there? Hallelujah. So a uh, way to fix that is if you're trying to conduct family life without acting on the word of God, which would be doing it by faith. The recommendation is go ahead and get on the word. Amen. You know, take the time to find out what the Bible is saying about you and your role in the family and then do your role by faith. Amen. That'll put your faith working in the area of family. So job, family, church life, these are the things that are specified in the New Testament with lifestyle patterns for us to follow. See, so church, you wouldn't, shouldn't dare come to church without being in faith. It's like what Pastor Cherie was talking about this morning. Amen. Okay, you don't just stumble around. You, these are powerful things. So just taking it as it comes and letting things happen is the alternative to living by faith. See, when you're living by faith, you're taking the promise and you're working the promise. Therefore, the outcome is certain. How many of you are following this? So living by faith has purpose. You're going somewhere. The trial of your faith is the thing that comes against the actual working of your faith. So if you learn how to endure these, the trial is going to pass and your faith will keep working. 
Lo and behold, you'll find out when the trial passes that you're still in faith, still operating, still working, still moving forward, and still on track. Amen. Hallelujah. In, in, in actuality, if you're in faith, in the trial, you're not even going to lose any ground. Amen. There's a good possibility you're going to gain ground. Ooh, thank you. So, you know, don't take the bait of trouble. Don't side with the trouble. So people get negative. Oh, I must have, uh, you know, the Lord is testing me. The Lord didn't bring the trial. That's in James chapter one. Okay, the Lord did not bring the trial. Okay, he's the one that started you on the faith process. See, let's make sure we get, get all the actors straight here. You know, God is the one that sent you on the quest. The enemy is the one who's trying to interrupt what you're doing. How many of you are with that? So even what people would consider just a regular, everyday, maybe even mundane life, you should not be doing any of that without doing it by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Raising kids. Hey, if you're not acting on the word, you're just bumbling along, allowing whatever happens to come and then trying to recover. That's not living by faith. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you are following that? Okay, so uh, number one, don't side with the trouble. Number two, go with me over to Ephesians chapter six. Okay, number two is don't defeat yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so one verse here, verse 13. Actually, I'm going to read 13 and part of 14 to you. Uh, he says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. The evil day is the trial. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Okay, and then he goes into having your loins girt about with truth, uh, Etc. Are you still out there tonight? Okay, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 and 14. Hallelujah. Okay, so standing, praise God. Defeating yourself would involve giving up before you get there. Now, remember, we're talking about endurance. So what happens is people get worn down, and they want to give up. Okay. And if you give up, then you're going to miss out. You're actually going to lose just because you quit. So don't quit. Hallelujah. Now, uh, well, it's not turning out the way I expected. That's still not a reason to quit. Hallelujah. Yeah, just make, we're, we're going to talk about the promise here. You've got to get the promise out there as where you're going. Amen. Okay, but we're still talking about enduring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to uh, the thing that the Lord told me to do. I'm going to stick with it. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to be steadfast, Amen. unmovable, yeah. abounding in the word of the Lord. Are, are you out there tonight? Now, uh, you know, frankly, many believers are good at that, okay? So it comes uh, natural with, uh, well, it's, it's, it's supernatural with your nature because you're more than a conqueror, okay? But there's also this natural side of thing that people don't like uh, giving up, don't want to die, don't want to just be defeated. How many of you feel that way? God is good. Okay, well, that coupled along with the operation of your faith and an overcoming nature, okay, it's, it's going to, you're, you're going to have a tendency to want to keep going. And that's good. So just make sure that you don't allow discouragement. So uh, years ago, I used to hear pastors, preachers talking about discouragement. And I thought, uh, you know, I've, I've never been discouraged. 
I, I don't allow myself the liberty of even thinking that way. I don't give myself the, the right to think about opting out. Therefore, I never even have to entertain it. Hallelujah. So don't defeat yourself. Now, so, so what people do is they keep a little, sometimes people keep just a little lingering doubt hanging around. So let, let's talk about marriage. I'll, I'll just use this as an example. Okay. A lot of times in marriage, people use the word divorce in their relationship as an out. Like, you know, if this doesn't go the way I want, or maybe it's a career thing. You know, if this doesn't go the way I want, then I can always out. Okay, well, you can with a career, praise the Lord. With a marriage, it's going to mess you up. You can't just walk away from a marriage uh, just because it's not turning out the way you thought. Amen. You're going to pay for that. There's reasons for that that we won't get into here tonight. Hallelujah. But sticking with it is uh, you're going to stand. Okay. So let, let's go through the thing about maybe career is better. Okay. To use as an example. So you uh, feel like the Lord leads you into a, uh, an endeavor, a career. Okay. Can be a business, can be a profession, can be. So, so uh, you Got the education for it. You started out, but then the job market started changing. Okay? So, um, stick to is one of the things that's going to help you arrive where you're going. But one of the things that people do is they're always looking for an out. And so, unfortunately, they fall prey to things every little bump in the uh, economy or something, and they're ready to change jobs. Right. Hallelujah. Now, what happens with, with that kind of a situation is your history follows you. Just to talk about jobs for a, a little bit. And then when somebody's looking for somebody that they can actually depend on, if, if you're one that bolts every time it gets rough, they're not going to be looking to you. How, little, how many of you are following that? Okay, so the same is true with any area of life. You know, if, if you, uh, every time you hit a bump, the book of Proverbs says it like this, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Okay, so with, with believers... If you start out on something, but then uh, every time there's a, a trial, which is a test, you decide to opt out, then what you're missing is learning how to persevere, how to have patience. So what, th this is not actually a scripture reference, but it is a, a, a principle that you know, you, you will find yourself back at the same trials over and over again because you're actually training the devil, showing him what is easy for you to give up with. And so all he's got to do is just bring back the same thing next time. So you try to take a stand and try to move forward and here he comes with the same thing, you know, unpaid bills or who knows what it is, you know, late all the time. Poor work habits. We're still talking about careers. Are you out there? Okay. And so what you'll do is you'll end up going through the same thing over and over and over again. Because every time you get to the trouble, you take the exit ramp. So you never learn how to persevere. Push through. Glory to God. Somebody out there ought to say amen. That's the reason why he says, having done all to stand... Then you stand. Now, the word always comes to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And so when you hear believers talking and they make it sound like it's not happening, no, it's them that's not standing. Because there's no such thing as God failing to bring his word to pass. That just doesn't exist. Well, I'm glad I came to church tonight. How do you know it's his will? Well, he shouldn't have made the promise if it wasn't his will. See, that's, that's out there too. That's just another excuse. An exit ramp when the pressure comes up. Ooh, I'm glad I came to church tonight. So don't defeat yourself by quitting every time trouble comes around. Glory to God. Okay, now number three, pick a promise. So go with me over to Hebrews chapter 10, uh, if you will. Praise the Lord. God is good. Now, so uh, getting back to the example, Jesus told his disciples to, to go to the other side. Okay, and it was actually more than once in his earthly ministry. He was in the boat sometimes, but other times he was not in the boat. But he told them to meet him somewhere. Actually, after he was raised from the dead, he said, meet me in Galilee. So anytime they were acting under his instruction, they were doing that by faith. Just like it says in the book of Hebrews, that's the way Noah built the ark. He was under instruction. So if you're actively acting on the word, you're in faith. Which means that the enemy is going to bring a trial, but your faith is the way you're going to keep going. Amen. So reality about faith, the way it works is the power to bring the promise to pass is in the word itself. For instance, uh, a man was uh, sick of the palsy, couldn't move. Jesus' ministry, they led him down through the roof. He was laying on a pallet. Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. Now, everybody in the room could see the guy could not walk. That's why they carried him in, led him down through the roof. That's the reason why the whole thing happened that way. Okay? But the power to get him off the pallet was in the word rise, take up your bed and walk. So I wasn't there to see it, but I can imagine how it happened. As soon as he started to act on what Jesus said, push off from that pallet, the power for him to rise up was in the word that he was acting on. So he got up, rolled up his pallet, and out he went. How many of you are with this? Now that is true of all of the promises of God. You act on it, and the power to do it is in the word that is promised. So the reason why that's so important is because people look at the word on a page and they, they're trying to figure out in their head, how is that going to save me? Well, you're looking at the dry kernel form right there. That's the seed. You're looking at the outside. That's the whole. But what's inside that word is that's the part that God brings to pass. Okay, that's where the faith comes from. That's where the power to produce comes from. It all comes out of that word. Mm. So pick one. Okay, now what you don't want to do is try to deal with something like physical healing without a promise. Because see, then you have no power and you have no direction, and you have no definite outcome. Now, the storm of sickness and disease can be daunting. But if you have a promise, then your course is set, the storm will pass, and you will make it. How many of you want to make it? 
Okay, now, so, so here's something to take into consideration. You do not have to die sick. Now, the, the, the Bible shows us everybody dies once unless we're raptured out. Okay, but death is not a defeat for a believer. Okay? But you do not have to die sick. All of us are going to go on to be with the Lord, but it doesn't have to be that you got forced out by sickness and disease. <clears throat> you know, the way the Apostle Paul talked about it is he was deciding how long he was going to stay. And it was actually going to be Caesar's government that would cut his head off. But he was deciding how long he was going to stay. <laughs> It wasn't Caesar's power. How many of you are out there? Amen. Okay, so pick a promise. Praise the Lord. Uh, you, you know, uh, every believer actually should have their faith developed concerning healing. Okay, you, should have, you should know what the Word says. You should understand what the Word says. And you should act on the word and you should, you know, get your, get your scriptures out there. This, this is where we're going. By his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we were healed. Okay. All right. So look at this one in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. He says, cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Confidence in scriptures is related to faith. Faith actually produces confidence, which is another way of saying faith knows the outcome. <laughs> Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Okay? So your confidence is going to hold you on the word, and the word is going to produce your reward. Verse 36, for you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Okay? See that there in your own Bible. There's no ambiguity about it. It's not if or when. Are you there? You have need of patience. We're going to joyfully abide under. Okay? His covering while we're acting on the word, while we have faith, which is doing the will of God. So, so people say, well, what is the will of God? Well, well, it's the word of God. Okay, the will of God for us is the New Testament and the New Testament promises. Hallelujah. So pick a promise. Don't just go wandering around without direction. You, you will, you know, I mean, you'll, you'll just be blown around by every circumstance that comes your way. And there's plenty of them. So pick a promise. Get on a course. Don't leave major areas of your life just loose without direction without consistency. Get on the word. Get your faith working. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Pick a promise. Stick to it. You have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, see, do doing the will of God is getting the word, the promise, and acting on it. That's the will of, we're going to do, the, after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody out there ought to say amen. amen.